What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the Star Toys ST-01 Lightning or their version of a Masterpiece Blitzwing. Now the name actually is a little confusing because in some places they're calling him Commander, some places they're calling him Blitz, sometimes they don't have any name. So on the Weibo page for this guy it is called Lightning so that's what we're going to call him. But this is their version of Blitzwing. Now this is supposedly made by the same designer that did the Transform Element and the Deformation Space figures, you know, the Re Seekers and the Blaster versions we got. So it is very similar in some ways in terms of the materials and the design. But let's talk about it. First thing we need to do out of package is reconfigure it. So it is actually uh, packed differently than it should be transformed. So number one, you'll see that it's unstable and that's because the heel spurs aren't out. And it hugely, greatly improves the stability. So you wanna do is take these, you can just basically push those up into the calves, open this up, there's a little tab right there for you to grab on. It's actually gonna click into place, open it all the way, and this is not all the way. You wanna click it one more click, and now it's flat. So you want this foot to be kind of flat like that, otherwise you don't have it configured correctly. All right, so same on this one, open that up, fold this, make sure you click it into place so it's flat. And now we have nice stable feet. That definitely helps. This one is actually much more stable than the previous two versions we've gotten from DX9 and from KFC. The other thing you need to do is fix the backpack. So one thing that might be an issue is these might be loose and these might not be in place. So you're gonna come into here and I'm just gonna show you how this works. The arm is on this rotating piece. There's a tab right there and a slot right there. So you wanna get that into the slot first. So it's like that. Then you're gonna come to here, there's a panel and this panel has a tab on it. It's gonna go into this slot right here. And it may be loose as you get it out of box. They might have not purposely not put it in there, but make sure that makes it the way and actually clicks into place and locks that shoulder. And then the last thing you want to do is take this. There's a little tab here that goes into a slot on his shoulder pad. And you want to make sure this shoulder pad is slid to the outside on the slider. You can see there's a slider right here, so you can slide back and forth. Make sure it's slid outwards. And then that's going to come down and tab into here and make sure you have all three things tabbed in. And now your shoulder should hold in place a little bit better. So just make sure you do that on both sides. And that one looks like it's okay. And the last thing, major thing, is the wing here. So if you prefer this look with the wings out wide, you can have it, but really that's not quite cartoon accurate. So you're gonna take this, rotate it, there's a tab on the back. So instead of the side, you're gonna use the back. That's going to go into here. You're going to untab this wing, pull it outwards on a slider. It's going to rotate to the front. There's a tab right here. It's going to peg in to the side of the wing. So it should look like that. So it's actually a little bit inwards. It actually looks a lot better, honestly, in my, my opinion. And this piece you can just take and fold inwards. I believe that's the official transformation, but it's up to you. You can kind of do it however you want. So same for this one. I'm going to unpeg this from here, rotate it. Tab it back in to here, and then unpeg this, slide it on the slider, rotate it to here, and tab it back in, and then rotate this inwards. And that's the configuration. Now you have another option here, which is more of a cartoon accurate thing. I'll put the cartoon image up there, but if you want this, you can fold this forward. It actually clicks into place right there. There's a little tab, so make sure you're lifting it up over the tab, rotating this down and then the tab kind of holds it in place. But there you go for that cartoon accurate look with the little wings there. And I do think it looks really good. They nailed the look of this guy in terms of the cartoon. Uh, me personally, I don't care for having these things outwards, uh, but if you do, you have that option. I'm gonna put them back in for now. All right, now let's go over his articulation. And while we do that, we'll point out the painted areas and the die cast. So starting with the head, the head is painted with the yellow, red for the crest, red for the visor, and then that white for the face. Head is on a ball joint, you can go up to there, down to there, side to side movement, and it rotates all the way around. 
So nice movement on the head. The shoulders can go out to the side on a friction joint. Make sure these shoulders are plugged in because as you rotate this ratcheted joint, you can end up doing this. So that's just a thing to be aware of. You might even want to hold here. But it should hold it if you do it, hold it closer to the actual shoulder. If you hold it down here, it tends to pop out. You have a rotation at the bicep. It does, it's a cut joint, so it does show, you know, breaks the sculpt, but it does work. You have a double joint elbow for the full bend. Your wrist rotation here. Fingers are individually articulated at two pins. This is done basically the same way as the deformation space star scream. The thumbs on a ball joint and then a pin so you can get that, or two pins, so you can get that pretty much any direction you want it to go. They're pretty nice hands overall. They're tolerance nicely. For the chest, you do have some paint here. We see have red accents here, yellow accent here, red here. These two squares are painted purple. Not sure why they chose to just paint that, but the rest of this figure, with the exception of the purple here on the shoulders, is pretty much unpainted plastic. It is kind of a shinier plastic, so it does look good, but it is unpainted. So just keep that aware awareness for uh, the finish. Coming down to the waist, you have a rotation here. There's an ab crunch. It's a little bit on the loose side, so it lets it has a little bit of play. So you can see, you know, it's not, it won't stay straight forward. Unfortunately, it's not on a screw, so you can't tighten it. But if you lift up on that ab crunch, you can get it way down and back. So you can get him kind of crunched and rotated at the same time. So that's a nice joint. I just wish it was a little bit tighter at the very end because there's a tiny bit of play in it. Not a big deal, but I thought I'd mention it. For the hip skirts, you do have a single hip skirt here. It's a little bit ugly. Um, you can kind of cheat and keep it down and it won't break the skull but if you want the leg all the way up you do have to have it upwards so it can be ugly if you have it all the way up like that i think but if you put it back down it's fine it goes up to there back to there out to the side all ratcheted every direction the first detent is right there so that's not too bad sometimes they if they do ratchets on the outward movement i don't like it because the detents are too far but these are just fine you have a rotation at the thigh at a cut joint. Again, breaks the sculpt a little bit. I'm not a big fan of this one because it kind of looks a little weird, but you have a double jointed knee, gets you the almost the full bend pretty much. And the joint there is, I believe it's plastic. Yeah, I think that joint here is plastic. Hard to tell. Coming down to the foot, you do have die cast here and it is painted purple just this middle section, the front and the back are plastic. So that's about the only die cast, at least exposed die cast on this guy. But you have ankle tilt out to there, you have pivot forward and backwards, and then the toe itself can pivot up and the heel can pivot down. And as far as accessories, you do get the basics. You get the gun done in purple plastic. There's really no paint on this at all, but it looks okay. And this will fit in his hand. It's nice and secure on the tab, and then you can close the fingers around it. Good looking gun. I just wish it had a little bit of paint accents on it. Then you have this sword. It does have a little bit of yellow paint there on both sides. And that will fit in either hand. Just make sure you have the tab facing the back. You can tab that in. And he looks really good. I like the weapons. I think they did a good job. I just wish there was a little bit more accents on the gun. So we also get an alternate face sculpt. Here's the stock face. It does look really nice. Getting it off is a little bit challenging because of the paint, but you're gonna lift up the neck and untap it from here. Grab a spudger. You're gonna need a spudger later anyway, so just keep it handy. And then work the spudger in little by little to get this face off. It has two tabs up here and then a little tab down here. So basically three tabs holding it on. Take the new face, tab that in, and then put, push the neck back down so it tabs in. And there's this yelling face. I think that actually looks pretty good. I'll probably keep that on there, but it's nice that they gave you that option. And for a quick size comparison, that is next to the Magic Square version of Optimus Prime. Yes, that's my new Optimus. And here's the Fans Toys Thomas, their version of Astro Train. And he fits in perfectly. He's basically the exact same size as Astro Train and 
Optimus here. Maybe a head tall, a little bit taller with the turret here and the shoulder pads, but overall it fits in nicely with the Masterpiece scale. And here's a comparison I think people want to see next to the DX9 Blitzwing. I don't have the KFC Ditka, so I can't compare it with that. But man, what a difference in the sculpt and look. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this because I am going to do a full comparison with this guy in a separate video. But there you go for sense of scale. It is actually bigger. The DX9 comes, the head comes higher and the shoulders are higher. It's overall a bigger figure. There you go. Alright, now let's get this guy transformed into his jet mode. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this review, the instruction manual, the video manual, comes in the reverse directions. So it's actually pretty hard to follow to try to get it from robot to jet mode. So I'm going to try to show you the best I can here. And hopefully this helps you transform it. So go ahead and fold these in. They'll just get those out of the way if you had them out. Fold up the arms. We're going to take and open up this panel, this little slot here to stick a fingernail so you can open it. It's going to come all the other side. While I'm here, I might as well show you. Some people were concerned about this exposed pin. Me personally, I could barely see it. It's on the back of the arm and I didn't really even notice it. The only reason I mention it is because somebody pointed it out to me on my Facebook page. It really doesn't matter. But Fold the hand in. Make sure you have the hand folded up like this in a square so it'll fit in there. And then you can bring the arm out to the side for now. So same on this side. Use that little slot to open it up. Fold this all the way in. And then bring the arm out to the side. Now I'll take care of the backpack and in theory this is actually plugged in here. But there's something I wanted to show you. So this backpack is actually tabbed in to the sides of these. So these are holding this center piece here and then that is tabbed in using these shoulder pads and then this panel here. So if you don't have all of that in, you could have, you know, the backpack coming loose. So you need all of those tabs really to make it work, but we're going to untab everything. So go ahead and untab this from the side, open up this wing, meaning pull it out on the slider, rotate it, tab it back in, rotate the wing this way and tab it into the side there. So that's the configuration for jet mode. Same with this one, untab it from the side. And if anything's tight, I recommend using a spudger to separate it instead of, you know, pulling it with your hands. It just makes it easier and puts less stress on the figure itself. Pull this out, tab it in, and then tab this into the side. And now those wings are configured. Now we're going to release this backpack so Pull this away. That's the tab I was talking about. It's into the side of the turret. Just open those up. And this was actually mistransformed in the instruction video. You want this folded out, obviously, for robot mode so it sticks out from the back. We can open this up. Make sure this is collapsed all the way. Fold that in. Put this back together and then tab it together here. You gotta give it a little bit of squeeze to get these tabs to go in. But that's the configuration you want. Uh, and just leave this here for now because we're going to take care of that in just a minute. Um, but that's the configuration you want. So come down to the legs here. And we're going to open up this panel here. It's tabbed into the side of the leg right there. And then this tab is into the side of the uh, shin. So those two tabs are holding it. Come to the side of the leg, open up this tab right here. That releases this whole piece here. So fold this back and, and make sure you have this folded down because otherwise this tab gets in the way, you kind of collide it. So make that straight. Bring this down and close that back up. And for now, uh, you can leave this open. Come to the heels and rotate this down. We're going to take the foot, open up this tab right here, so that makes half of the booster. Open up this one here, or rotate it, and then push it backwards. And that's going to end up making the other half of the booster. And it can be a tight tolerance there, so just make sure you are got it rotated properly all the way. 
and it should come together to make, you know, booster. And then take this panel here, that's going to rotate to the top, and then put that back down. So you end up with something like that. And then go ahead and do the same thing on this side. We'll do that off camera. All right now they have both legs kind of configured correctly. Come to the front here. Going to unpeg this hip skirt. Fold that down. We're going to rotate here at the bottom. So not at the waist, but at this crotch joint. Because uh, you want this on the other side. And then you can bring this back down. It's actually tabbing back in to what looks like the same joint that was on the other side. All right, now we're going to take care of this backpack. Lift this up. We're going to unpeg all of these. So open up this. Then we're going to take the shoulder joint there. And this whole thing is going to detach from here. So it's tabbed in there, here, and here. So now we have that detached. You can rotate this back out of the way. And same on this side, go ahead and unpeg the shoulder pad. And this one's a little bit tighter on my copy. Open that up, unpeg this from the side, and that'll allow you to rotate this whole thing up and out of the way. We're going to take this whole piece here, and we're going to rotate this entire upper body section, just the upper body all the way around and you can bring this back down on the ab crunch hinge okay. at this point we can open these back up bring this down this is actually going to collapse like this so you have the purple on the bottom this is going to sit into here fold these up straight that's going to sit down like that. That's going to come down and tab in. So there's a slot right there and a tab right there. There we go. Then same thing on this side, get that tabbed in. And that's kind of the bottom of the jet. All right, now we'll work on the front and the wings here. So open up this neck joint here. We're going to unpeg these chest pieces here on both sides. Those are going to rotate back. We can actually close these hip skirts that I had open. Rotate these back. Actually, they're going to end up sitting right here. Put them there for now. Open up this entire piece here. And you can open up this piece here. So you can see what you're doing. There's a panel in there. This panel is actually mistransformed to begin. So when you get it in package, this will actually be open. You want that closed for ro robot mode. It's actually open in robot mode, um, but you want it closed. All right, leave that open for a second. Open up this, rotate this panel 180 degrees, and then we're gonna open up this panel here. Like I mentioned, that's mistransformed out of the box, so you wanna tuck that away. All right. Come to the inside here on the other side, and you can see that's where all of our nose cone stuff is sitting. And take that entire assembly, rotate that out. This is another mistransformation in the box. I don't know why they did this, but these nose cone pieces are actually rotated like this and sitting like this. So if you have it like that, you're gonna have trouble going to, to the tank mode. So you should store them the other way. It is a painted surface here. The white here is painted. So you do want to be careful, but you want them stored like not this way, like this. Anyway, so we're going to rotate these out. And you can see there's some white marks there on this ball joint receptacle. I didn't do that. It was just like that when I got it. It hasn't affected anything, but I just wanted to mention that. Open this up. Uh, this is going to rotate down. You might have to rotate this landing gear upwards to get it out of your way. But then you can put it back down once you're done. So once you get the nose cones out, tab them together. And then take this top piece that's going to come down. 
and tab in. There's a little tab on the front that goes right there. All right, next we'll take care of this head and these pieces here. So I recommend a spudger. Get the spudger to open up these pieces here. Otherwise it's gonna be tough. Rotate the head to the side. That'll allow you to pass it through. And then rotate it back. And that's just gonna tab in. You can see now it's a smooth surface on the top, like that. And the head is sitting flat inside there. So you're gonna close this up. The head's gonna end up inside, but these panels need to make their way into these slots right here. There's two slots. There's really no way to do it other than sticking your finger in this way. And these have to clear, so make sure they clear. And then push them forward with your finger from the other side until they make it in the hole. And then once they're lined up, give it a squeeze. And that will really solidify the whole thing. And it also looks nice too, but you need to use your finger from this side to do that. All right, come back to the top here. Now we can kind of fix all this. This is gonna come down and just sit right there. And you can see the heads in there. I'm gonna take this panel here, that's gonna come down on this double hinge and just sit flat on top. Same on this side. And we're gonna take care of these wings, which are kind of crazy. So, this is gonna come back, and I'll try to show you from this angle. Bring this, rotate this around, and bring it out to the side. Because what we're gonna do is pass this arm past it. So rotate this arm up, and it has to swing all the way past it. And it's a little tricky, but that's what you need to do. All right? I'm going to end up on this side, like this. Open up that tab right there. All right, now that we have the arm folded over, we're going to take this, and I believe we're going to rotate it this way. Or rotate it this way so that the hand is facing the outside. And there's three operations you're trying to do here. One, you're trying to get this into an L shape so that you can get this over the top. Two, you have to fold this tab down and it's gonna make its way into this slot right here. And three, you're gonna get it over the arm. So you gotta do all that at the same time. It can be a little tricky, but there you go. That's what it should look like. And you can see there's a missile built in here inside this, which is really cool. I'll show you later what it ends up looking like. But Take this panel, bring this up. That's gonna come and tab in right here onto the side. Make up the wing. This panel here is gonna rotate so that you have the track on the bottom like this. This is spring-loaded, so you're gonna open this up. This is gonna come down. Make sure it's slid inwards on this hinge. Bring this down, and that's gonna sit just underneath there, just like that. Now I'm gonna take this whole panel, bring this down. There's a tab right here and a slot right here on the side of the leg, and a tab up here and we're gonna bring this tail fin back. It's actually gonna come all the way back. And now you have a slot there for this upper tab. So rotate this, actually get this out of the way because you don't wanna scratch that paint. Rotate this all the way down and make sure both of those big tabs make their way in. And you can see there's a slot here. Well, that's because you had to slide this upwards. In robot mode, it was slid down. Now we're gonna tab those two things in and it really is secure, so if it didn't go in, you'll know this should actually make its way all the way in. And you might have the tail fin blocking it, but there you go, now it's all the way in. That's how it should be, it should be really solid connection. And this you can leave down like this, that's how we had it configured. This is gonna come back up and sit in here and like I mentioned, just be careful with that paint. So that's one side done. Go ahead and do the same thing on this side, I'll do that off camera and be right back. All right, now that we have both of the wings in, there's a couple finishing touches, is get these landing gear up. And again, I recommend a spudger to just grab in there and pull that up. The front landing gear is right here that you can just grab with your finger. And there is lightning in his jet mode, and it looks really good. Let's put the G1 cartoon there so you can take a look. I really like the proportions 
overall. That's always been a problem with Blitzwings, is the Gemma ends up becoming really ugly. This actually looks really good. They did something smart here. They built in a missile inside the track. So even though the track doesn't look that pretty, it's got a nice little missile in there. By the way, we're going to remove that later, but that looks really good. Here's the back, the boosters, the tail fins are painted like I mentioned. Yeah, overall really nice. You got the translucent cockpit here. I don't think you can open it in this mode. Let's see, can you? Oh, I guess you can. So you can open it. It's nothing to see in there, but you can open it if you want to. Um, yeah, it's a little tough to get it back in. So I guess I don't recommend opening that. It does roll on his wheels very nicely. It's a nice, chunky, hefty thing. So even though there's not a lot of die cast, just due to the weight and the sheer amount of plastic here, it feels very solid. Overall, a good looking jet. There is no mounting points for these on the jet mode or the tank mode. So I just wanted to mention that. And for size comparisons, there it is next to MP10 Optimus Prime and the MP52 Skywarp. And fits in pretty nicely. The jet mode is a little bit stubby in terms of the length. So here it is standing up and the nose cone on Skywarp goes a little bit higher than the nose cone on Blitzwing. As far as the width, the Blitzwing is a little bit wider than MP52 and obviously a little bit taller you know, in terms of its width. Um, obviously Blitzwing was meant to be you know, a pretty big jet, but I think it fits, it works well, uh, and the proportions overall look good. All right, now let's get Lightning transformed into his tank mode. And just like the other one, there's no instructions or the instructions are in reverse. So I did have to kind of figure this out myself, but I think I've got it pretty much correct. But come to the bottom here, I'm gonna close up the landing gear. I can leave this one out for now. I'm gonna start with the nose cone here. So we can um, unpeg this panel from here. And it might help if you actually release this panel here from the back and it helps if you just kind of squeeze apart this and then you can get uh, a spudger or something in here to remove this panel. Now that's free, now you can lift up this panel here. So leave this up like this so you can see kind of what's happening in here. So we had to get all of this unpegged and you might need to stick a finger in to get a little bit of leverage. So you can open up these and again be careful with the painted surfaces. I'm going to push this open, and again, you can use a spudger or your fingers, but you got to get this open. Open that up, rotate the head to the side, fold these panels inwards. You can pull the head up, actually, off of this panel. We're going to take the nose cone and take it back apart. So, pull this tab out, and pull the nose cone back on a double hinge. Rotate the nose cone. Again, you have to do that, otherwise you won't be able to fit everything. And put it in like that on both sides. So it looks like that. Then we're gonna take this entire thing and actually this is gonna come down and fold into here. And sit as basically like that. Take the Now you can fold this down. Take the entire thing and rotate this whole assembly back in so it sits down here. And try to be careful with those painted surfaces. It's only so much you can do. So. All right, so those are gonna sit in there. Now we're gonna take this and that's gonna feed its way into here. It can be a little tricky just due to all the stuff that's in here. You know, if you open up a little bit. And then close this down. This should go all the way flat. If you look on this side, that's what the head should look like. It's nice and flat now on this side. You can close this back up and then bring this down and that's gonna sit open like that. All right, back to this side, we can fold these out of the way. And now we're gonna take care of these tank treads and the wings. So use a spudger get this detached from here and rotate here, not here. 
unpeg the wing from here. On the wing itself, we're going to unpeg the wing, pull it outwards, rotate it 90 degrees. And that's going to come to the bottom and peg back in right here. And just leave that down for now. We're going to take care of all of this. Is basically have to flip around the other direction now that we have it all configured like this. So open this out to the side, open this up, rotate it this way. Take this entire armature and that's going to work its way around this again. So fold this up, rotate this out, and bring the arm down and basically flipping it around to the other side of this wing. You can just get this out of the way for now. And you have to get this pegged in. There's a couple places. There's a peg right here that's going into a slot underneath the arm. You want this to be in an L shape. And it, it's tricky, but you basically want it to be underneath the arm. So that the L ends up under the arm. And it can be tricky to get it all squared away. And you want this arm to end up in here. So in order to do that, we actually have to take out all of this. So this is a, kind of an ingenious thing they did. They have the missile. You're going to unpeg this missile here. And you unpeg this. Open that up. So hold on to this for a second. Make sure this is flat. Like that. And this is going to work its way underneath the arm. And you can kind of lift the arm out of the way a little bit. But that's why you have to fold this flat because it's got to work its way under here. And then make sure the tab that was inside gets tabbed in underneath that arm. And it's a little tricky because you're doing it blind, but it's right in there. You can see it. So make sure that squeeze it in there. Come to the other side. This is where this is going to fit. So this is going to basically tab in right there on the other side. Kind of a cool little trick they did there. All right, next we're going to take this panel here, open this up. And then you're going to bring this down. There's a little tab and a slot there. So get this lined up and tab that in. And make sure this is underneath. There's a little spot for it to go. If it's not, it'll, it'll not be configured properly. All right, so it should look like that. You can bring this back up. Uh, and just leave this here for now because we're going to take care of all of this in a little bit. But Go ahead and do the same thing on this side, get the tracks configured, and then we'll do that off camera, I'll be right back. All right, now that we have both of the tank tread sections ready, we can take care of the turret and the lower body. And this part can get confusing, so you kind of have to keep it straight, but open these up. I'm gonna fold this turret out. While we're here, we're gonna take these booster sections, fold those inwards. And make sure they're flat so it'll actually go in. They can be tight, by the way. Make sure these are just sitting on top. Take these panels, they're going to fold back in and just peg right back into the legs. Like that. Next, we're going to take and open up this waist hip skirt. Fold the ab crunch up a little bit. That's going to allow you to rotate the legs 100 degrees. Close the ab crunch back down and then put this back in. Make sure it actually pegs in to there. All right, now we're going to come to the top here. We have to open up these panels here. Fold this upwards. We're going to rotate this entire top section 180 degrees around. And make sure it lines up perfectly straight. Now you have to rotate both of those. Otherwise, you won't get things lined up. Right, just set this back here for now. These can come back in. You're gonna bring this turret section is going to peg in right here underneath. So there's two tabs on each side. Just make sure they make their way to the sides of these purple panels. Bring down the turret or the uh, tank treads. There's two pegs here and here, and then there's a little slot, and that slot actually fits this armature. It's kind of a really smart way to do it. So bring this down and peg it in. And that fits right there. So on this side, bring this down, peg it in, and make sure it makes its way around those armatures. So it should look like that, basically. For the tread, uh, the uh, actual turret here, you're going to unpeg it. 
bring this around, open this up, rotate this to the inside so it's kind of overlapping. That'll allow you to rotate this around and rotate this around. Bring this back down. This is going to come down and tab together on the bottom. So you can tab those together. And these are going to come down, rotate around, tab into the sides. Same this side, rotate this around, bring it down, tab it into the side. You can extend this. I, I saw a picture where somebody had cracked this. I don't know how they did that, but it does extend. There's two extension points. Come to the back here. You're going to take this section here. There's a tab and a slot here and a tab here and a slot there. So get those all lined up and peg that together. Then you're going to take this outer part. There's a tab right here that's going to go underneath into there. And then there's a tab here that's going to go to the side of the, the wing. I'll tell you, this is the really the tab that's holding it together. So make sure that's the one that you want to make sure that gets in. There's a tab down here that's going to make its way into here. And it kind of just does its own thing. But first, make sure this one goes under there. Then get this one into here. Looks like it made its way in anyway. And then this little slot ends up with a tab inside of it. All right, so we'll do that. Again, on this side, a little faster. And then a couple of finishing touches here. Go ahead and fold these down so they're at an angle. And then this turret is actually going to sit. There's two tabs on the edge of this straight piece. Just got to get those around. They'll just fit on top of it. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but it should end up flat like that. And there's lightning in the tank mode, and it looks really good. You do have a little bit of paint on this one. You got some purple paint on the outside here, some of that beige paint on the wheels. Um, for whatever reason, they do rotate, but you know that's not part of it. There's wheels down here. It does roll very nicely on those wheels. Nice and heavy. Even though it's not a lot of die cast, it's just a lot of plastic again. So you can rotate the turret all the way around. You go up to there, down to there. And like I mentioned, you can't extend it. I'd recommend holding it, you know, kind of here so you can give it a little support. Otherwise, if you slam it down, maybe that's what caused that crack. I don't seem to have any issue there, so I'm not really sure what the issue was. But There's the back. It actually looks really good from every angle. There isn't any kibble anywhere. There's a little bit here, but it just looks like tank parts. So, again, I think it looks really good. Size comparison, there it is next to the MP10 Optimus Prime. It's a big tank. Um, I think it looks good. It's obviously not scaled, you know, in a real scale, but for me personally, it's a nice size tank for MP display. So final recommendations on the Star Toys Lightning. I'm gonna give this a four out of five. I'm gonna recommend it. I really like this figure. I think the robot mode and the tank and jet all look really good. They're all solid. They don't feel, you know, flimsy at all. I was a little worried about at least one mode usually fails in a triple changer, but all the modes work here. The weapons are okay. They're not anything to write home about. They're, it's a very tune accurate, but the plastic and overall you know paint on this, the finish, is mediocre. It's not amazing, but it's not bad either. The shiny purple does look good, and in the jet and tank mode, it looks fine. But it's uh, not the finish that you might be expecting from something like fans toys. But for me personally, it's okay. The biggest downfall for me personally is the lack of instructions. Uh, the video manual that comes with this, which is done by Mang Motion, who does really great videos, is lacking. It's one, it's the wrong direction. It goes from tank to jet to robot, which we need the exact opposite. And there's actually a mistransformation in it. It actually fails to do the the cannon here. So that led to a lot of frustration on my part trying to figure out how this thing transforms. Now you can see obviously I figured it out but now that I've made this video you guys probably won't have that problem so it's kind of a moot point but for me that is kind of an issue. But that's really it. I really like this figure. I think if had they done a finish, a paint on it, it would have been a five out of five easily. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.